أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر O Messenger Indeed we have granted you abundant goodness from which is the river of Kawthar in paradise فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ so be grateful to Allah for this blessing by performing a prayer for him alone and offering sacrifice for him alone. Indeed, your hater, your enemy is cut off from every goodness. and will be forgotten. If remembered, he will be remembered negatively. Very short surah. If you think about it, and what happened is that the Prophet وسلم, at his time, he was like, Allah has given him a number of children, male and female. But all the males died at his time, during his time. And at that time in uh, that area, in Arabic Peninsula, in Saudi Arabia, in uh, Ardul Hijaz, Mecca so and this is also still going on so they consider the person who didn't have males sons among his offspring is cut off so he will not be remembered after his death Nobody will carry his name after his death. So they used to call the Prophet Al-Abitar, the enemy of Allah. Indeed, your hater, your enemy is cut off from every goodness. And this is the answer from Allah to them. It means that the Prophet, peace be upon him, is not cut off, but your hater, your enemy is cut off from every goodness. And then go to the first verse, Inna a'atainaka al-kawsar. We, that's inna. So Allah Taala is talking about Himself with the plural. Inna, we. we. That's inna. Indeed, we have granted you abundant goodness. So it is not I, but inna, we. And this is. Um, to bring to your attention the greatness of Allah Taala in the Holy Quran, in the different verses, you will find out that in the we. This is referred to Almighty Allah, Rabbul Azza. So don't think about what they say, because your sons have died during your time therefore you will not be remembered no you will be remembered and your name will be remembered every day five daily prayers in adhan you must say ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah twice and during your prayer 
you remember his name. And every day you make salah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you make salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And his companion. And you bring like this to your attention. And even you can, you, we extend that to the Prophet Ibrahim, the father of the Prophets, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So who is cut off? The enemy of Allah, the hater of Mu'mans, or the Mu'mans. So, how we shall reflect upon this surah? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when that happened to him, when they called him al abathar meaning the one who is cut off, he will not be remembered. Allah corrected that. Allah sent the answer from the, the revelation. Allah sent the angel Jibreel to teach Prophet and to teach his companion and to teach the entire Ummah that never think that you are cut off because of worldly things. So you may not have son, you may not have a daughter, you may not have any of his strengths, but you will be remembered. And Allah says, Inna we a'atainaka, we have granted you abundant goodness. From which is the river of al kawthar in paradise? And this is something special for the Prophet Wasallam. And the ulama, when they explained that, they said, the river from which the Prophet Wasallam will give a drink will allow his followers to drink from that al kawthar and the cups, the number of the cups is equivalent to the number of stars in the sky, many abundance. But the major thing is that the word al kawthar and this is one of the, um, the beauty of Arabic language, Al-Kawthar, it refers to the river in paradise. And the meaning of Al-Kawthar is abundant goodness, meaning um, many uh, plenty of goodness. Um, so remember the Prophet وسلم, during his time, Allah Taala has given him many things, many blessing, blessings, starting from the time of his birth, and after he passed away, that continued through his nations, through his followers through the one who follow his footsteps till the hereafter. No one has been remembered but the Prophet You can study the history of human being. The only one has been remembered positively with all 
the values and has received all the respect was the Prophet We have granted you abundant goodness from which is the river of al kawthar So the word al kawthar is the name of a river in paradise. In the meantime, it means abandoned plenty, many, huge number, numerous amount. So that be grateful to Allah for this blessing, for his blessing, and perform your prayer for him alone and offer sacrifice with your uthiyah, slaughter your uthiyah, slaughter animal in the name of Allah, for him alone. So that surah was revealed upon the Prophet وسلم, to show him that Allah has granted him abandoned abandoned goodness nowadays we recite this surah we remember that event we remember that but let's think about yourself we have been granted abandoned goodness from Allah Taala. the first blessing from Allah is to be a Muslim this is the best blessing na'ma from Allah is to know your Lord the true God and to be among Mu'mins among Muslims who embrace Islam and who single out Allah wa ta'ala in their life. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. If you think about this word and you look at others who worship cows, fires, uh, animals, um, priests, whatever, fake idols, idols here, fake like gods, around like thousands of gods were, were, were worshipped and are worshipped around the world and you are the one who follow the truth la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah that's the first na'mah and think about um you got the opportunity to stand before allah and you offer your prayer that's a ni'mah. That's a, a like a blessing from Allah. And you fast, and you get close to Allah, near to Allah. And your health, and whatever Allah has showered you with blessing during your life. And even when you are sick, this condition bring you closer to Allah and be rewarded so even for difficulties and hardship you have been treated with honor you have been treated in a different way so you shouldn't think about the pain anymore but you think about the reward that will come to you from Allah So when you recite this surah, we have to bring this concept to our life. Indeed, Allah has granted us abundant, abundant goodness. So that be grateful to Allah and his blessing by performing your prayer. It mentioned the prayer, but it, it, it means 
live your life accordingly to establish the prayer whomsoever established the prayer in a proper way his life is going to be fixed his life is going to be um, toward Allah following the footsteps of the Prophet the prayer will help you to stay away from sins and mistakes إِنَّ الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر The connection with Allah So if you are successful حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح Hurry to your prayer Hurry to success Hurry to الفلاح الفلاح If you are success If you are, if you are being successful to offer your prayer in a proper way, your life is going to be corrected, is going to be um, full of happiness. Anytime you hear about somebody who throw accusation, um, try to make fun of you um like humiliation mistreatments whatever because of your faith because of your iman you should think that he is the one cut off and you are not cut off you are not cut off so be proud of yourself Whatever you are going to miss in this life, think about what Allah Taala has given you. In the shani akwal after. So if you have somebody around you bragging about something, about money, about cars, about position, about whatever, their family, their kids, whatever. You think about what Allah has given you. They may have children, they may have money, they may have cars, they may have this and this and this and this. But when you think about the true life, your heart is full of faith, love of Allah. But they are not. I will stop here and I will ask Sister Layla to uh, invite you to do your share. Bizarrekumullah khair. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. This is such a wonderful, enlightening surah. Who would like to uh, start us off with their reflections upon this? Before you begin, I remember, guys, we're not too long ago, we just completed the series I did on the hereafter. And we spoke about how on the day of judgment, you know, uh, how the people will be, uh, the, fo the followers of this nation will be removed from the hellfire, you know, and how uh, they will be served a drink from that uh, uh, El Qatar that will help to revigorate them, revive them and bring them back. And also for those of us who get across that bridge, for those of us who make it across the bridge, how we'll be so hot and tired, thirsty, thirsty because of the heat from the fire, even though we didn't touch it, you know, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be there, you know, to serve his people uh, cups from his, uh, uh, this El Qatar. So this should be fresh on your mind uh, for many of you, because we just completed that series. Uh, who would like to start us off? You know, when I think of, when I recite this surah, you know, it makes me think about that day, that day, uh, the day of judgment. Go ahead, Sister Elma. Okay, let me just open it up. I'm trying to. Okay. okay. So, uh, from this surah, I learned that Allah is teaching us to be people of insight and to remember the ultimate reward. It teaches me to keep the ultimate goal in mind. 
It teaches me about what it means to be on the side of Allah. He grants us blessings and will make us superior over the, over the disbelievers, both in this world and in the hereafter. He will, he will make us be honored unlike those who disbelieve. How, however, we still have to do our part in this world. We have to submit in prayer five times a day and remember Allah. We should also be of those who sacrifice for Allah and humble ourselves in awe of Him. And we should remember that the promise of Allah is true. And even though we may live a humble, modest life in this world, we will be given al kawthar And our enemies will be those cut off from His reward and His blessings, even if they were more successful than us in this world, in the worldly matters. That's all I did for today's class. Dr. Hassan. Uh, so, subhanallah, you, you have uh, mentioned something very interesting. So, in Aata Yanak al Kawthar, we have granted you al Kawthar. And this is abundant goodness. So, it has been given to the Prophet Sallam, and also for true mu'min. For mu'min. Um, Allah Taala. Allah has granted us with abundant goodness as well. From which uh, Al Kawthar. So Al Kawthar, this is a river that has been given to the Prophet Sallam in paradise, um, with a cups equivalent to the number of stars in the sky. But in the meantime, if you are among the followers of the Prophet Sallam, you will be given a drink from Al Kawthar. So you will enjoy that river. So it has given to the Prophet Sallam for his Ummah to drink from. Subhanallah. So whatever Allah Taala has given the Prophet Sallam. This is for himself and like bounties and blessing for his ummah as well. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Ilma. That was a good contribution. Yes, mashallah. Sister Sahar, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, that surah was revealed in Mecca. Uh, it was the 15th surah to be revealed containing only three verses, the shortest Torah ever, but it has rich, very rich meanings. Allah's using the word we to express glory and authority. Uh, and uh, and uh, al al means lo lots of givings or prosperity. Allah gave Prophet Muhammad prosperity in this life and the life after. For example, Allah gave him, many years later, victory in many wars, leading Mecca, and his nation is the biggest ever. And he is the most prophet that's being followed. And people in Jannah, half of them will be Muslims. And Prophet Muhammad hopes if they become two-thirds of of Ghana occupants. And his book, Al Quran, is the most perfect, intact book ever. And Allah combined his name with the Prophet's name. We say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And this never happened like this before or after. Uh, this is the first meaning of Al Kaus. The other meaning. Uh, that was mentioned in Al Bukhari book. The Kawthar is a river in Jannah. Its length equals its width, and the banks of, of it of pearls. Prophet Muhammad saw it as the Isra and Mi'raj journey. Uh, and its water is so white and so tasty. It, uh, they, they said uh, it's better than honey. Allah gave it to Prophet Muhammad and he wanted all good Muslims drink from it 
they uh, and they will not be thirsty after after that ever. And there is no uh, contradiction in meaning between the two meanings we mentioned about, I mentioned, Dr. Asim mentioned uh, about if uh, Because uh, as Ibn Abbas illustrated in the Bukhari book, the Kawsa is a river in, in Jannah. This is a part of prosperity or givings that Allah gave to Prophet Muhammad. Uh, and when we go to the next ayah, next verse, Allah ordered him to thank God and to pray to thank God. And praying uh, is always only for God. It's the only obedience that's all of it is for God. And after that, uh, to uh, flatter the sacrifice, to feed the poor, for God to. And the third verse, the one who hates you the most is the one who is cut off of spring and goodness. And this person's name was Al Asr ibn Wa'il al Sahmi. This man uh, said that uh, after, after, the, after the death of uh, the two sons of Prophet Muhammad, Abdullah and Abul Qasim, and Al Qasim, Al Qasim and Abdullah, and both of them died in Mecca. And he has a third son whose was name was Ibrahim, uh, but he was born in Medina many years after. But at this time, his two sons, Al Qasim and Abdullah, both of them died as uh, children in Mecca. So that person, Al-Asr ibn Wa'il al-Sahmi, he said uh, about the Prophet Muhammad, he has no offspring now. Uh, and and uh, Arabs at this age used to hate girls. They love boys because they grow up, they work, they make money, and they go to the war. So they, got, they bring the prosperity. So he accused the prophet of, has, of uh, having no spring, no offspring, because he had only girls left. And Allah defended Prophet Muhammad. And he said that this person, that Al-Asr ibn Wa'il al-Sahmi, this one, is the one who has no offspring. Meaning he will get he will uh, he will not get use of his of his sons, although his son is someone that's famous, Amr ibn al -Aust. He became a Muslim and leader many years later. But this one, this man, will not benefit of any of his son, and he will come alone at the judgment day. And uh, we all noticed that. In many years, uh, some grandchildren of Prophet Muhammad are exist in each age, each decade, each year, and some of them are scholars and imams. They are the grandchildren of Lady Fatma Zahra, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. And uh, they are exist now and till the end of the world. So did you notice the prosperity Allah gave to Prophet Muhammad? He is the Imam and the leader of all prophets. He is the best creature ever. He is the one who will knock the doors of Jannah. Then angels will ask, who is that? He replies, Muhammad. They said, okay, Allah ordered us to open it only to you first. Then Prophet Muhammad will enter all Muslims and all people inside. Peace and prayers on him. Thank you. Jazakallah uh, khairan. MashaAllah, she uh, went for uh, further explanation of Al-Kawthar and how it looks like. 
And uh, as she mentioned, it was narrated in the hadith of the Prophet Sahih al-Bukhari. Um, so, um, and the meaning of Al-Kawthar, this is the name of the river in paradise uh, from which all the followers of the Prophet will drink from his hand, peace be upon him. And uh, this is, you know, a special river for Prophet And during the uh, night journey, um, he passed by and he saw this river and he asked the, the angel Jibrail, what is this? He said, this is the river, this is al kawthar This is a river in paradise. And in the meantime, al kawthar the meaning in Arabic is abandoned goodness, uh, like numerous, plenty, amount of, many. So, and uh, you bring the reflection, you bring this meaning to your heart, and you say to the, yourself, Allah has given me abandoned, abandoned goodness so that I should offer my prayer and I should do the sacrifice only for Allah, not for anyone else. And at any time I receive uh, negative uh, like comments from haters, from enemies of Allah, I shouldn't care about it. If someone call me names, make fun of me, that you are cut off, you miss this, you live in misery. No, I live in happiness, and they are the one who live in misery. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Sahra. Uh, Sister Layla. Yeah, that was wonderful. Go ahead, Sister Jamila. This sewer here has a lot to ponder, but I didn't um, do like I really wanted to, so I just thought it, got it down a few notes. So, um, Sura al kalfar it has great meanings and it gives us proof of the success of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he excelled in many ways over the other prophets. And by this, the glad tidings of the Prophet and the great blessings he will receive in paradise from Allah. The Surah also sends a great message on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anger was towards the enemies of the Prophet when they tried to provoke or challenge or insult him during his mission of Islam. However, he overlooked those who envy and those who show jealousy and the spiteful ones and how people think and the things they have done and have said to him. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, attained a great position from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who believe in their hearts and soul there is no God worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his prophet. Yes, we can perform salat and sacrifice, but it should be done spiritually for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. There are many ways to commit shirk and I try to stay away from it. So such things as abandoning my salat, loving others more than Allah, or fearing others more than Allah, or seeking help from others more than Allah. <laughs> These are some of the Palestinian. I do not wish to earn anger of my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or gain his anger by disobeying his commands or the prophets, peace and blessings be upon them, the teaching, like the ones who hated the prophet. 
They would not drink from the river of El Khalfar, nor will they see the face of the prophet. As I stated before, there are so much volume to this story, uh, to, re <clears throat> to really ponder over. One of my prayers is, Yea Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, please bless me to make it over the Surat Bridge in the day of resurrection and protect me from the fire and don't cut me off in the day of judgment. Bless me to make it into gender paradise to meet you to meet your to meet your to meet our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi and drink from his hands of that cool tasty water water made of milk and honey. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala please bless me to see your face and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam face. Uh, so, um, like in the beginning, in the Atayinak al Kalthar, we have granted you abandoned, abandoned goodness. So, we have to think, we need to think, how to become qualified to receive abandoned goodness. Only if you follow the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in order to apply this, um, to reflect upon this verse and the surah, try to think about how to become qualified, um, how to promote your faith so that you will be granted abandoned goodness. And then to drink from that river, Al Kawthar. Fasalli Rabbika Wanhar. To offer your prayer in a proper way. And you do sacrifice only for the sake of Allah. And at any time, never think that you are, you know, humiliated. Um, because of somebody, you know, throw any words, any bad word to your face. Try to bring funny stuff because you are a special, you are a Muslim, you have been given um, abandoned goodness and bounties from Allah. So, we should try to reflect upon these verses. Jazakumullah khairan. Sister Layla. Yes, alhamdulillah, mashallah. You know, you think about what deeds are most pleasing to Allah. You know, one of the ways the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said our good deeds are not enough to get us in paradise. Your good deeds alone are not enough. You have to also earn, you know, the mercy of Allah and the pleasure of Allah. And one of the things, you know, what are the abundant, there's so many things we can do to earn Allah's sacrificing for him. What sacrifices have we made lately, you know, for Allah, you know, that would even qualify us, you know, for this, to taste of this water, to drink from this river and earn our spot you know, in paradise, subhanAllah. Yeah, Sister Sabrine, go ahead. Um, my servitude to Allah and dedication to the trust that Allah wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me and to my Lord I offer all of my prayers and self-sacrifice. I shall be those who oh, I will share, I have shared, excuse me, with those who reflect, those believers 
that will reflect with me. I pray that one day I shall drink from the river of culture in paradise. And I pray that that is not too much to ask for my Lord. I ask Allah to shower me with gratitude for the blessings and mercy of not being of those cut off due to their own disbelief of foolish choices. That's it. Yeah, I like how you said foolish choices we make. And that's something that we need to think about. So often as Muslims, we make choices, you know, uh, that are not good for ourselves. And we know that the choices we make are not good. We're giving in to our desires, you know, giving in to the evil nature of ourselves. We need to reflect upon how there's consequences. You know, on that day, we'll be wishing that we had made better choices. You know, that heat when you're standing there on that Surat bridge, you know, and that heat, you feel in the heat of the hellfire as you try to cross it, you know, that darkness surrounding us, you know, we all, we, and then we have to stand there with those, our deeds weighed against us. The choices that we made, we are faced with the consequences of it. That's something that to ponder. You know, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us to ponder you know, uh, death to ponder that day. That's why he detailed what would happen that day. That's why he told Allah revealed that river, you know, to us to make us ponder and think, you know, harder about the choices we make. Yeah, Dr. Awesome, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, the one is cut off is the one uh, who will uh, um, miss the opportunity to be in paradise. The one is cut off is the one um, who missed the opportunity to meet with Allah during his lifetime um, and to have the Jannah within his heart. Because if you don't bring the concept of Jannah to your heart during the lifetime, you will not go to paradise. You will not have the opportunity to be in paradise. So the one is cut off is the one who spent his life or her life uh, away from Allah, feeding their body with worldly desire. Um, so they think about the beauty of their body, but they neglect, they forget about their soul. So we have to think about the important part of our elements you have no way um, there is no way to get that but from Allah the creator and uh, remember rabbika, offer your prayer to your Rabb the one who has provided you with all the bounties who has given you all what you need during your life. So you are the age of 20, 30, 70, 60, 80. So how, how much you have been giving during this time? And the difficulties and hardship you faced during this life. And Allah wa ta'ala has solved all the difficulties and hardship so that you are you survive and you you still uh, making the wudu washing your body standing before Allah and say Allahu Akbar and your heart is beeping La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah um, so this is something very special. This is something, if you think about uh, 
this blessing, you will say, Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. So I believe we have come to the end of the class. So uh, Sister Anisa, MashaAllah. So if anyone wants to share their thoughts, please raise your hands so we will see you. Sister Anisa, you may start. You know, not always giving us something to look forward to. Our counts are, if we're not careful, will make me think that it's a river only for our prophet. Because I remember reading about it in the Quran years ago, and I've read it again since. And it always seems to be directed for the prophets in Islam. But when you really ponder it, it's a reward for all of us. It's a reward for me for going through the sacrifices that I have to go through, not even knowing what my sacrifices are going to be, because I'm trying my best to follow in the footsteps of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu because he was taught, he was given understanding. So therefore, I too must follow him and try to have the understanding and sacrifice as he did and be thankful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Allah has protected me from my enemies and enemies can be people, diseases, animals, anything out here in this world that can attack me. They are my enemies. And yet I learn from them if they are approachable to me. If I have to deal with it, then I've got to deal with it and learn from it. And then my reward would be the same reward that's given to our Prophet Muhammad, which makes my heart please. Because I can drink also from that particular fountain, from that river that he gave to our Prophet in Islam. And understand that Allah guided him and Allah is guiding me only because I'm in submission, trying hard to be in total submission, which is something I'm learning each and every second of the day. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan, mashallah. So um, uh, you have brought uh, uh, beautiful meaning. So, فَصَلِّ لَرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرِ to do the sacrifice and to remember that we need to um, practice how to sacrifice uh, our desire in order to move toward Allah. So um, it is not you sacrifice, you slaughter the lamb, but we need to slaughter whatever is attached to our heart before you slaughter the Uthiyah. So we need to live the meaning of sacrifice is to empty our heart from everything but Allah. And for Salli Rabbika, you establish the prayer, not you do it by action. So um, if you think about the meaning of establishing your prayer and uh, one har offer sacrifice um, and you go in depth to how would you be able to do that? It is not to bring pleasure to your heart and you say, oh, I made an uthiyah and then I distribute the meat to the poor and the needy. But you slaughter the desire, whatever is attached to your heart. Anything from worldly desire we need to slaughter in order to bring ourselves closer to Allah. And always think about spiritual elements. Your soul, beautify your soul. Not only beautify your body, but also beautify your soul. And um, purify your heart purification, heart purification. Cleansing your heart from anything like evils. So, as I mentioned, in order to qualify yourself to receive abandoned, abandoned goodness from Allah and to drink from Al Kawthar in the Day of Judgment, inshallah, we need to follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Anisa. Um, we have enjoyed your share as usual. Um, I 
I can't see any more hands. So inshallah, we are going to conclude. And next discussion is going to be Surah Al-Ma'un. أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينِ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ وَلَا يَحُبُّ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينِ This is uh, Surah 107. The first three verses only. Do you recognize the one who rejects the day of judgment? Who deny the day of judgment? فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ it is the one who harshly turns away the orphan when in need. And he doesn't encourage himself nor others in feeding the poor. So this is for next time, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless you and your family. سبحانك اللهم وحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصى بالحق وتواصى بالصبر سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين